All right, you guys, so I've been messing about here and took the Titan motor off this ESC. Now this 2200 KV 1515 motor, if I use the stock mount here, the mount comes up just enough where the bottom of the motor hits the chassis and then this sticks up slightly. So if like this goes all the way down, see how that lip right, hang on, right here. The black part of the mount and the gray part against the chassis, that lines up when that drops all the way in. If I screw this to this motor, this comes up just barely because the motor is up against the chassis and then this can't shut all the way to hold this motor in, uh, mount in place. However, as you can see, there's plenty of room so that, you know, this is all the way down. There's plenty of room in here for the motor to come up, left, right, down. It doesn't matter because this plate, this part right in here, right on this edge that goes in between the motor mount and the motor fits perfectly right there and flush. So that means that this motor can go all the way up against that and be screwed down and lift up and have plenty of clearance under the chassis, okay? And then with this much space in here, you can get just about any ESC you want. I'm gonna be putting a Mamba X in here. But um, yeah, this, this can definitely fit. It's just about, can I find somebody who makes a mount that would fit that? But I'm gonna do some research. I know I can do this. All right, you guys, here's your proof of concept here. See the motor's in, this cover's all the way on, plate's on, still have clearance. See, you see that movement? So it's still got clearance under there. If this was all screwed down, of course, that wouldn't move. Let me take this off and just show you. So what I've done, I've just mounted just one in there. Again, proof of concept, but I've mounted the one really high up, right? So that mount, I mean, it's, it's damn near flush with the bottom of the motor. And if I could use, normally you would use the same letter depending on your gearing, but if I can use I and like even raise this up a little bit more, so that was down, I can rotate this and raise it up and use A, but the shaft is hitting the plastic here, right? So I could just grind that down because I, you know, I wouldn't be using D or E or anything like that. And I wouldn't have to grind much, but rotate that around just enough. Or we can use that other screw because J would be probably too low. And just a little more rotation there and A would line up perfectly. And then I could just, you know, play with the gearing there. But if this was, like I said, just a custom mount where I'd be able to set the gear mesh, you know, with the motor being higher up, this would, this would work. So I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to do some research, see if anybody makes anything or, you know, the hot racing one, maybe that will, that would work out, but we'll see. All right, so in order for me to put a Mod 1 gear here, I had to take the two front and two rear screws from the rear differential. Those are the two front and two rear, one there and one there. Had to take the screw out of the bottom for here for that center uh, bearing, and then that came off. And then just move this whole thing forward uh, out of it like this. And then the front bearing and gear came off. Of course, you can see there, metal gears, metal gear diff. 
And now I'm looking to take this off where that pin is passing through. And then I will cut a flat spot so I can put a mod one gear. So this is just an example. Five millimeter mod one. We'll slide right on this shaft. And the flat spot will give me something to screw the grub screw down onto. All right, I got the pin out, the uh, spur off, and then what I did is I slid that bearing from here all the way up to here and put that into place so that this is in the right spot and then use that grub to just tighten that down right there. This pinion in particular has got a spot for a grub on both sides, so this will allow me to take this back off and mark that spot so I know where to cut. Um, but before I cut, I'm going to put that bearing and gear that connects to the rear differential back on and make sure there's no fitment issues. So I slid everything on. Fitment is good. The only concern is this bearing is a little bit different than like this one from the middle. So just using another one of these and sliding it back isn't going to work. So what I think I'm going to do, because I'm not going to use this spur anymore, I think I'm going to cut off right in there. I'll take this piece off first, cut that end off so that I can slide that plastic piece and the bearing on so that I can totally fill up this space in here. Maybe in the future I will look up what this, the outer diameter of this bearing is and then just purchase one with a five millimeter center and whatever that outer is. And that way I'll just have a uh, bearing with no plastic insert. All right, so I think this actually turned out really well. I got it started with the cutoff wheel there, but quickly switched over to this really flat file. And hopefully you guys can see, got a really nice flat spot right there for the, uh, for the grub. So really happy with that. All right, we're back in. Everything fits, rolls nice. Ready to keep going. And for future reference, that's 12 millimeters on the outside, five in the middle, and four on the width. 12, five, four. All right, you guys, uh, out here, hard at work. Um, I guess I got the motor in. I'm gonna have to find a pinion that will fit in this size since I can't shift this around um, and set mesh. I'm gonna need to find the perfect size pinion to pair with that until I come up with a different solution there. In order to get that motor to mount though, because the shaft was so long, I needed to dremel out right here. Now, the only thing I am worried about though is once I do get a pinion installed, um, well, yeah, I'm, I'm looking at that right there. As soon as I get a pinion installed, that's not gonna fit under there. Well, maybe I need to look to see if somebody makes a custom one of these. Because if that's not gonna fit and that will need to be open, then, then people will really know what I've got going on under here. <laughs> All right, other than the fact I'm doing this video, well, as you guys know, I quickly realized that I was going to need to cut out a space for the pinion gear to stick up through. So that's what I'm working on now. I used, I cut off most of it with the Dremel and now I'm going through the very long process of filing it down to the exact right size. So I can try to keep the structural integrity of this piece because this is what helps hold the motor down to the chassis. So I'm working on that. All right, I'm trying to keep the updates coming. I have finished trimming this part out, so the gear is gonna stick out of there. Uh, there's just enough space on both sides. And if I need to ensure that it fits, I can take the motor and this cover all off at the same time, get the pinion on, tighten it down, and then put it all back together. Put this side piece back on and have the sensor wire running underneath there. This, of course, is braided up like I had it before. And I'm gonna double side sticky that. Go ahead and feed this in through here and swap this 
out for this guy so I can use it with this receiver or transmitter so I can get longer range. So one antenna will be here and the other antenna, I'm thinking I'm gonna have just kind of across here, maybe tucked under there. I don't know, we'll see, but yeah, I think it's coming along really well. Oh, I'm also gonna cut these off and try to do something different there. All right, double-sided sticky tape, double-sided sticky tape the receiver, one out this way as far as the antennas, one coming under here, zip tied to there so it doesn't come out, and it's, a, it's away from the motor so it shouldn't be interference from that. And all the wires are tucked away really, really nicely. Now I'm just going to try to figure out if I wanna to try to run this on 6S or 4S. Um, if it's 6S, I'm gonna have to raise up the post here to fit the 6S battery, and then I'll just put a castle connector on this side. If not, then I'm gonna cut this down and just run 4S and still only have one plug, one battery. All right, you guys, tight fit on the width, but it just, just fit in there. And then with some spacers there and there, I was able to raise this up and use the regular Traxxas battery hold down. So as you can see, works perfect. Keep the balance port in there, plug right there. So I'm gonna hook up a castle connector on this side. And <laughs> it's kind of heavy. It's kind of heavy for what it is. All right, you guys, battery in, body's just resting on top there. I zeroed it out after I put the block on. So as it sits, this is a five pound, 10.2 ounce vehicle running 6S. Don't, don't let that fall over. Guys, everything is set up beautifully. It's gonna be just a teeny tiny bit heavier because we have no pinion on, but oh my gosh, this thing is amazing. I am really, really happy with the setup. Let me go ahead and plug this in so you can see. Of course, this only plugs in one way. Turn this on. Everything's hooked up, everything's working. I did it before I started the video. Here, let me plug this in real quick. No pops on the plug. You can hear 6S there. That works. And I can turn up the gyro. You can see that works wonderfully. I am super, super happy. I went ahead and calibrated it. But of course, <laughs> with no pinion, it doesn't move. But... Guys, I am super, super happy about this. And the body is just awesome. Let me put this back on. And look, you just line it up, click, click. Super, super easy. That is such a sharp body. Let me go ahead and set this down so we can see it all the way lowered. Look at that, just gorgeous. <laughs> Can't wait to get some lights in this thing. And it rolls beautifully with that mod one. There's no binding or anything. Loving it guys, totally, totally awesome. Look at that rear end. We are all set up, you guys. We just need to get the pinion in the mail. And I'm gonna check the gearing. And with this being 6S, we're gonna, I'm gonna turn the throttle down at first just to make sure we're not, you know, gonna wreck on our first run. But I think we'll be well on our way to 100 mile an hour with this Fortec 3.0. If you guys wanna see that, be sure to subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.